What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all having a kick-ass Monday. I'm super excited because we are officially starting to mod the 350Z today and we're gonna get started with that harness bar that I showed you guys last time so then the next video I can get those brides and the harnesses installed in the car. But in order to do so I need to get these two cars pulled out of the garage, flip the 350Z around and center it in the garage so I have room to work around. So I'm gonna do that and I'll see you guys in a sec. All right, so we got the car all situated behind me. I've got the harness bar pulled out already. So I need to look through this box because there's supposed to be some hardware that came with it, but there's a little hole in the corner of the top of the box and I'm really hoping the hardware didn't fall out. So I'm gonna throw you guys back on the tripod really quick, look through there and try to find that hardware and then we'll get started. All right, so unfortunately after rifling through that box like you guys just saw, there was no hardware in there and I don't know if they stopped including hardware, but on the site it says it's supposed to include it. So I need to hit up in Juku about that. But I've set the harness bar in there to see which holes it was because there was one bolt in one of the holes that goes back there, which I think is just for a stock like bracket. So I'm gonna run over to Lowe's and hope to God that they have two of these bolts. Um, well, I'm gonna need to replace it because this one has like a little step on it that doesn't fit through the harness bar. So I'm hoping they have two bolts with this thread. So I'm gonna run over to Lowe's real quick and I'll see what they got. All right, so Lowe's is coming through in the clutch. They did have the hardware, which I'm shocked about because just about every time I've gone to Lowe's to try to find something metric, they don't have it. So I'm super stoked on that. If you find yourself in the same situation, yours didn't come with hardware. It uses an M8 by 125, and then the length that I went with is like a 35. Um, so I'll let you guys know if that length is right, but I got that as well as some washers. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into what we need to do to get the harness bar in the car. So I realized I forgot to show you guys the actual harness bar and tell you like which harness bar it is in the first place. So I went with the graffiti harness bar and got it through Injuku Racing. So let me show you guys the harness bar and kind of why I picked this one in particular. All right, so like I said, this is the graffiti harness bar. I got it in the mirror black finish. It comes in, you can get black, red, or blue. Um, I chose to go with the black just to keep the interior nice and clean. But what I liked about this harness bar in particular was that it wasn't just one that mounted to the B pillars behind the door. It's actually got four points there, which I feel like will help with just chassis rigidity. Obviously these cars are already pretty stiff to begin with, so it's not like a huge concern. But I just liked having that four point mount system. The quality on it is awesome. Great powder coat, nice welds. So that's why I went with it. I feel like it's a good price point. Um, they have them on the website for 350. Um, marked down from 400 so you know not a bad price um, so yeah let's go ahead and start looking at getting this in the car all right I've got the back hatch open as you can see the struts on this are actually blown out it's one of the things that I need to fix on the car uh, so I've got the jack handle holding the door up um, but the back two points are just gonna mount in back here there's a hole there and then one on the other side and then it's gonna mount up on those uh, B pillars up there so I'm gonna work on disconnecting that one and this one here, my goal is to keep this arm in here. They say you have to remove it, um, but my thought is that if you remove it, then this is gonna hang and just kind of clack against that if you're not using this, which I won't be when I'm drifting, but I do wanna retain the stock seat belts so that when I'm driving it around on the street, you don't have to wear a full harness. So I'm gonna go ahead and detach these and look at what I need to remove out of this to retain just the arm part of it. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so like you saw, in order to get that off, there's just a little cap I popped off with a flathead, and then this is a 14 millimeter bolt. So what I was talking about is like this arm here, you can, I don't know if you can make it out on camera, but that, this center portion where my thumb is, if it'll focus right there, that's the only part that I really care to retain. Um, the rest of this is kind of unnecessary for the actual, just having the arm there. So I'm gonna try to take that stuff off uh, just to thin this down, because obviously once the harness bar is there, that adds another layer of metal to it. So I'm gonna see what I can do there and I'll get back to you guys on what I end up doing. All right, so this is what I was talking about. Like all of this stuff came out from between the B pillar and the arm that I showed you guys. So my hope is that by removing this stuff that we can just keep the actual arm here. So that would be just the arm and this little cap here 
just to kind of keep the interior looking clean. So I'm hoping that the bolt has enough threading to do that with the harness bar in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the other side off. All right, boys, we got the stock seat belts disconnected. We're ready to put the harness bar in and start connecting that up. So now you guys get to watch me wrestle that thing into the car. We'll see how this goes. All right, so getting that in with the stock seats folded forward actually went pretty well. So we've got this in here. What I'm gonna do is throw a bolt in one of these back ones here, just kind of have it be held in place. And then we'll figure out what we're gonna do up there where the seatbelt connects and how much of that arm that I was showing you guys we can retain. All right, so we were able to get it to work that we're able to retain this arm like I was hoping for, and we'll even be able to put the cap back over this so it looks all stock, just tucked over the harness bar. So I took a bunch of the washers out of here, um, but I just wanna make sure I could actually do it first. Um, and I'll show you guys on the other side kind of what I did if you're doing it at home. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to show on camera and try to like put all this together, but so basically what I did is I took out all those washers that I showed you guys, and then you have the bolt running through the piece that holds the seatbelt here, this loop right, right there on the top part, then there's the cap for the arm that we were trying to retain and the arm. And then that is just gonna go right into there. So we kind of stripped out all the inner workings of that arm. But like I said, I wanna retain that arm so that it keeps the seatbelt from clacking against this plastic trim here uh, and also keeps the stock look of the interior. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt those up and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. All right, you guys, it's been about an hour since I filmed that last clip. And for something like this harness bar that only has four mounting points, four bolts to go in, I have been getting my ass handed to me. And by no fault of the people who made the harness bar, I've just run into like the most random issue. So let me show you what we're dealing with, but I think we found a solution for everything. All right, so I apologize if the lighting's a little tough to see, but so on the right side of the harness bar where it connects to the deck lid, you can see there is this little spacer off the bottom because it drops down kind of into a, a dip in the deck lid there. Whereas on the other side, if you can see that there, it doesn't have that. So there's no spacer. So you need two different lengths of bolts. So the ones that I picked up initially, these guys were the same length. And I think for the right side, it was just barely too short. And for the left side, it was probably gonna be too long. So I went to a different hardware store because I knew Lowe's wouldn't have like more specialty stuff and was able to find what I think would have come with this kit to begin with. And I found the lengths that I needed online and just picked up a few extras to make sure I have the actual proper length. So it's still the, M, uh, the M8 by 1.25. And then I got a range of 25 millimeters in length to 50 millimeters in length. Obviously the longer ones being for that side with a spacer on it. Now the second issue that I was running into was that on this side over here, the bolt wasn't wanting to go in and I don't want to cross thread that hole. Um, so I'm hoping that by chance it was just that bolt that was having issues going in there. Um, so I'm gonna try one of these new ones in there on the off chance that it's not, we're going to use this new tap and die set that I picked up and just retap that hole for these bolts. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna jump into that and we should be moving right along now with the proper hardware and potentially needing to tap that out. All right, so unfortunately the bolt was not going in, so I do need to tap that hole out, um, but I was putting the tap in there and it spins into it. So it's like, it's the right threading. I think that someone may have just put a bolt in there before and kind of like messed up the threads on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up, set the camera down so you guys can see it. And then fingers crossed that that gets us where we need to be. We did it boys, we finally did it. So I had to sit there and I retapped the hole like I was showing you guys. And once I did that, everything went in nicely. So I torqued down the bolts in the B pillars to spec, tighten these guys down back here and that thing is in there. So let me show you what it looks like on the inside with retaining those stock seat belts because you know, with a car that you're gonna drive on the streets, I don't wanna drive around on the streets in a harness um, for a variety of reasons, safety, uh, you know, visibility, trying to turn that kind of thing. I definitely wanna have the stock seat belts in there. So let me show you real quick. So this is what it looks like. You can see the harness bar. Well, it's a little dark, but harness bar runs up there. Got the stock seatbelt with the arm so that this guy isn't gonna clack around on there. Exactly the outcome we were hoping for. So that is a success on the harness bar. All right, well, it is the next day because I just had to go and make this project that should have been an hour take another couple hours longer. So after that clip that I showed you guys last, I decided that I wanted to get the plastic cover back over the hardware and the B-pillar that holds the seatbelt and the harness bar on. And in doing so, I ended up cross-threading one of the holes and bolts as I was pulling that bolt out. And it took like three trips to the hardware store trying to get the right tap and die to fix that. So that was a total pain in the ass. And then by the time that I got it done, 
uh, I had lost light and really couldn't film. So I just want to show you guys what that looks like, why I ended up doing that and the finished product. So I'm gonna hop inside real quick. All right, so here is the culprit here. So this little cap is what cost me a couple more hours of work and a lot of frustration, but it looks good. I like that OEM finish. Um, you know, you can hardly tell that it's there, which is what I was going for. So let me pop open the trunk real quick and I'll show you guys what this looks like. All right, so that's what the harness bar looks like all installed from the back. I really like the black finish. Like it pops on the interior without being like too much or like too obvious that there's aftermarket stuff in the car. So definitely glad I went with the black. If you guys are doing this install at home, um, obviously because all cars can like vary a little bit or the harness bars might vary, what I would recommend doing is getting kind of all your bolts set in there, starting with these back two here. Get those like kind of loosely in the holes there, then put the top ones in up there and there and then kind of tighten everything down once you've got the bolts all started. And that seemed to be what made this process the easiest. Well, it might have taken a bit longer than it should have, but the harness bar is done. So that is a wrap on this week's video. I hope you guys are excited about the 350Z as I am because this project is officially underway and we have a bunch more videos coming for you guys. So if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, you wanna see more 350Z content, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps us a lot. But until next time, peace out and I'll see you soon.